What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be something a little bit different. Today I wanted to do a tutorial for you guys. There's a lot of people right now during this pandemic making YouTube videos, using Premiere, uploading videos for classes. And I think it's important that people know how to use the softwares. And I think it's important that uh, people don't be afraid to, to, to try out the softwares. You know, they might look a little bit complicated, you know, but they can be quite good and quite useful. So... In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys my recommended settings for Adobe Premiere Pro. So obviously, uh, the only things required for this video is going to be Adobe Premiere Pro and optionally Adobe Media Encoder, but we'll be explaining that later in the video. So first of all, let's go ahead and switch scenes here so you guys can uh, see my desktop over here. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and uh, got my uh, Pokemon Sword Randomizer Nuzlocke uh, uh, one of my episodes uh, finished episode here and I'm going to be showing you guys what I think are the best recommended settings now I'm not going to be showing you guys how to use Premiere how to edit videos or anything like that if you want to learn anything like that just head to Adobe's website they may they have fantastic tutorials on how to do everything other than the encoding bit because there's so many different use cases so I'm going to be primarily focusing on YouTube and YouTube alone so Let's say you've got your video, you've edited it, you know, you're really, really happy with it. You've watched it all through, you're happy to export it, but then you don't know how. So the first thing you're going to want to do, once you have your finished video, you're going to go to file. You're going to go to export. Then you're going to go to media. Now, this is the the the, the newbie way of doing it, the, the first way of doing it. There's nothing wrong with this. Let me just put that out. There's nothing wrong with this, but... Uh, there is a quick way to get to this menu without having to go through all those menus up here. So if I go ahead and close this, make sure you have the sequence selected. So you've got the blue line around all of it. You're going to press the control key on your keyboard and M. There we go. You can see it opens up the export settings uh, box. It just makes it a little bit easier. It gets you used to using shortcuts if you're not using them already. Uh, makes it a lot easier. Now, a lot of you probably already know how to get to these settings, but then it's once you're in here that you see all of these things going on and you don't quite know what to do. Don't worry, that's completely fine. So I'm going to try to make this as basic as possible and I'm just going to give my recommended settings. Now, for some of those people that want to understand why certain settings work, you can look up what the settings mean or I'll try to give a brief description of as many things as possible. So first of all, let's go ahead and go to format. So first of all, you're going to want to make sure your format is H.264. H.264 is a codec used by pretty much everyone that uploads videos online because it has great quality, uh, pr relatively small file sizes. Uh, the compression is, pre is, is pretty, really good. Is, is pretty good. And honestly, you probably wouldn't mo notice much difference uh, than, say, doing a raw video. Next thing is going to be the preset settings. Now, by default, it will probably be set to match source high bitrate. If it's not, do not worry. Set it to that. And then that gives us a good baseline. So the next thing you got, are going to want to do is go down to where it says output name, click on the blue, uh, the blue letters or the blue numbers, and you're going to want to find a location where you want to export your video to. This is going to be where your final video goes to. So in uh, in this case, I'm going to select uh, my desktop, and I'm just going to go ahead and call it tutorial. Hit save. There we go. Next up, we're going to make sure export video and audio is selected. Next, we can ignore all of this information for now, but this will be useful uh, in just a moment. Next thing we're going to be going to doing is the video tab. So under the video tab, you can see we have a couple of uh, options which are already ticked for us and which have already grayed out. We can't touch them. Now, this is absolutely fine. This is intended. The reason why uh, I've actually done this is because usually when you're editing, say, uh, a video you're going to want to export it in the same resolution that you've edited it in now for the majority of people out there this will be uh the resolution of 1920 by 1080 also known as hd now obviously there's some people out there like including myself including this video that actually do uh high resolution videos um in that case your sequence is probably set to that so do not worry uh so, as you can see, the width and height, you can leave that checked. If you did want to adjust it, say, for example, you've edited your video in 4K, but you actually only want to export it in 1080p, you can lower it. Don't worry, just uncheck it and then set the width and height here. Next thing is frame rate. Don't worry, keep that ticked. Field order, keep that ticked. Make sure that it is set to progressive. It should be anyways if you set up your sequence correctly. 
Next up, you're going to want to scroll down and go to encoding settings. Now, the encoding settings, I'm not going to go over too much. I'm not going to go over in too much detail. All I'm going to say to you guys is I recommend you selecting software encoding. By default, it is set to hardware encoding if you have a NVIDIA graphics card. And whilst it does dramatically speed up your exporting times, the quality is, I guess you could say, hot garbage compared to using something like NVIDIA NVENC. Unfortunately, Premiere didn't choose to implement it like that. So I just recommend staying as far away from hardware encoding uh, in Premiere as you physically can. Next up, we have Profile. Now, a lot of people probably won't touch this and it honestly doesn't make a lot of difference, but I recommend just uh, unchecking the box and selecting high just to ensure as good a quality as we can physically get. Next up, we can scroll down a little bit. We can scroll down until we get to bitrate. Now, bitrate is something where um, I will try to explain this as uh, to you as much as possible. When you upload a video onto YouTube, uh, the video that the people view is not the actual exact file that you have uploaded. It is a compressed down ver uh, version of the video you've uploaded. So for example, say you upload a video and you've selected it to render at 30 megabits a second. When that is uploaded to YouTube, YouTube compresses it down, if it's a 1080p video, to eight around, uh, people estimate around 8 megabits per second, which is dramatically lower than 30. Now, you, your first instinct might be, oh, okay, so what's the point of uploading it to 30 if it's only going to go down to 8? There is actually a reason for that. And because when you constantly encode the same video again and again and again, even if it's the same bitrate, it will start to lose quality. In that case, uh, it's actually better to feed YouTube a higher bitrate video so that it loses as little quality as possible. Now, I don't recommend just turning the slider up all the way because that's not going to get you anywhere other than a absolutely tremendously large file size where you get to a point where the video quality is high enough so that YouTube can YouTube can only uh, can only retain as much quality as physically possible for eight megabits a second. So you just want to make sure you upload enough so that when it goes down, it doesn't just make it look hot garbage. So I'm going to just throw up on screen my recommended bit rates for recommended resolutions. Now, the three most common resolutions I probably would say are going to be 1920 by 1080, which is 1080p, uh, 2560 by 1440, which is 1440p, also known as 2K resolution. And then the next one is going to be 3840 by 2160. This is going to be 4K resolution. Now, for 1080p, I recommend a bitrate between 25 and 30 megabytes a second. For 1440p video, I recommend a bitrate between 35 and 40 megabits a second. And for 4K video at 60 frames per second, I would recommend anywhere between 50 and 60 megabytes per second. And I'm going to explain this a little bit further than I was initially going to, but it's also uh, recommended to know that any videos above the resolution of 1080p, so for example, 1440p and above, will be given a special codec known as the, VP, uh, the VP9 codec, which actually renders your videos at higher than eight megabits per second. And the reason why it does this is because these higher resolution, higher pixel uh, videos require a lot more bitrate. So when this happens, you will notice that a, 14p, a 1440p video compared to a 1080p video of the exact same one will look vastly better, not because of the resolution, but because YouTube uses a more efficient, higher resolution, uh, sorry, more efficient, higher bitrate codec. So the only way to get VP9 in your videos is to render at 1440p or above. However, I do not recommend doing this if your video is not 1440p or above by default, because A, it will increase your rendering times and B, uh, your resolution will no longer be native and it can introduce some scaling problems. Anyways, that's enough about that. In this case, we have a 1080p video. So I'm going to recommend a bitrate of 25 to 30. So we're going to go ahead and set the target bitrate to 30, as well as the maximum bitrate to 30. Here we go. We can scroll down here. Nothing else to see here. The last thing to do is look at this box here. Use maximum render quality. Just check that. All it does is it just gives us uh, the most best possible quality that we can uh, that we can get. Now, uh, before I go any further, this is the point of the video where I made Adobe uh, Media Encoder completely optional. For those of you that want to just export inside of Premiere, hitting that export button and go, that's absolutely fine. There is nothing wrong with that. However, I do recommend you stay and listen to my uh, explanation of why I believe you should use Adobe Media Encoder as opposed 
to exporting within Premiere because there are some benefits and not in terms of rendering speed as such, but there's some, uh, definitely in terms of, uh, of efficiency and workflow. Also, one more thing to note is that you can see the estimated file size of your video here. Do not worry. The reason why mine says 10 gigabytes is uh, around 10 gigabytes is because this is about a 45 minute video because this is a uh, quite a long, a long, big project. Anyways, so if you've got Adobe Media Encoder installed and you want to use that, go ahead and press Q. What this will do is this will actually close that box we just opened. It will open up a new program after a couple of seconds called Adobe Media Encoder. All Adobe Media Encoder is, is literally just exporting. Uh, it's just a program for exporting videos um, one by one by one by one. Uh, for example, say you have like three videos, you've got to get up three videos. You've got to render and three, three videos you've got to export. And usually you would hit export. Wait for that to finish. Open the next project, export it again. If you were to do that, um, it would, it would take a while. You have to keep coming back. You couldn't just leave it render. You'd have to wait. Uh, you'd have to wait for the video to render, come back, do it again. And so on, so on, so on. In the case of using Adobe Media Recoder, you could just queue up as many videos as you need. You hit the go button and it will export everything one after one after one after one after one after one. One thing I did forget to mention earlier, and it's not that important, but I do recommend it. Under the preset section, you could do this in Adobe Media Encoder as well. You just, you can save a preset. All this is going to do, if you just click on the preset button over here, uh, and next to preset, you hit the little save button. You can make a preset for all of these export settings. So you don't have to enter in these settings every single time you do it. In this case, I'm just going to call this, uh, I'm just going to call this YouTube. And what, now I have a preset for YouTube that I can just select every time I want to export one of my videos, uh, just like that. Okay, so the next uh, advantage to using Adobe Media Encoder is that when you export in Adobe Media Encoder, you are still able to use Premiere at the same time. Whereas if you were to export via Premiere directly, you would lock up Premiere. You wouldn't be able to touch it. You wouldn't be able to do any more editing. You'd have to wait. So you can see, for example, in this case, I have full reign of Premiere. All of my video works. You know, I can, I can do whatever. It's absolutely fine. No problems. Okay. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all you guys need to know. Again, these are just my recommended settings. So if you uh, want to tweak them a little bit, you feel like something works a little bit better for you than I've suggested, definitely be sure to try that. The good thing is, is that you can just experiment. There's no harm in it, you know, unless it's something that you need up drastically. These are good settings to go by uh, for, for the most part. Um, obviously, if you're doing HDR content, things will be a little bit different. So make sure you keep that in mind. But if you guys do want to see a HDR video, don't be sure to let me know. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video and you found it useful, don't be sure to rate, comment and subscribe below. Make sure to hit that notification bell so you get notified when I upload. See you guys in another video. Peace out.